Hey, this is Sebastian, and I'd promised that we were going to test in-app reviews in our latest video. So let's get to it. Let's, let's see how we can test this new in-app review API uh, for Android applications. Um, so last time we were doing this, we had built in some code to launch our in-app review. So we had our review manager factory right here. We had a couple on complete listeners. And we had deployed this code to our emulator. So if you're testing out uh, on a debug implementation of your code, if you try to launch your in-app review, so that's what this button does. You know, I put a little toast in here to say in-app rating complete when the callback was complete. That's probably what you'll see. <laughs> you won't actually see the um, in-app review prompt uh, show up uh, when you're testing. And there's good reason for this. So. Google has a whole documentation section on testing in-app reviews. I uh, highly recommend to read that. I did so, and I learned a lot. Um, definitely some things to keep in mind. There's a quota for the number of times that you can potentially see this in-app review online. I, I think somebody said, you know, maybe you'll see it once a month um, in terms of the, the quota max. But uh, yeah, I'm still not sure exactly what it is, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but there are ways to ensure that you always see the in-app review prompt. So that's using an internal app sharing um, method. And I'll talk about that. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but uh, but yeah, when you're when you're debugging your application, just as a, a normal developer, you probably won't actually see the in-app review prompt, especially, you know, I'm not sure if it's exact if I've already rated the app before or if there's another mechanism blocking it. Um, but but yeah, don't expect to actually see it. So to actually see the in-app app, uh, in review. If you've pub published your app on Google Play already, you can use this internal app sharing mechanism. So click on this button, it will pop up uh, this screen right here. Um, you can make a release APK um, through your normal release APK process. Um, you know, I just did this right here uh, for a gener generate sign bundle APK for a release build. Uploaded the um, app bundle. Um, right here, and as you can see, I did this last week, so on August 18th. And then uh, you should get a link, and it's a really long link. Um, it goes for quite a ways. Uh, and this will go out that you can share with all the testers on your on your current testing system. I actually made a little shortened link over here um, called uh, Bitly Rating Install. And so only my testers should actually have access to this. So I'll delete this from the device. So that was the debug application that we had. And we'll try to install this uh, release APK, or re release app bundle that I made. So if we go to bit.ly slash rating install, uh, Google will verify my account. I'll uh, stop sharing my screen for one second. So I'm plug in that password. So now you can see me on the rating library tester screen. So this is the app that I already have published on Google Play. And this is the, the bundle that I made locally with the test code. Um, and this is for an internal test version. So I can install this. And I've actually never used this functionality before. I'm used to the typical Google Play test tracks of a alpha, a beta, and then a public channel. Um, so this is kind of cool that you can kind of share any arbitrary app with any of your testers. So we'll go in here, we'll go to Google in-app rating, I'll launch the uh, test, and here we can actually see the in-app review screen. So it has my you know, Google Play information over here. I can go in, I can give it a rating, and then I can give it a review. So say, this is great. And you'll notice one important thing, you can't actually press submit. So that's how we get around the quota. So to always ensure that the user always sees the in-app review um, through this internal testing track, they disable submit. So that means that you know, if you were to dis you know, distribute the application through any other testing track, you have to abide by whatever quota has been set up, if the, you know, especially if the user's already reviewed, you know, maybe there's an extra quota in place, but this is through the internal test track mechanism, one way to always ensure that you see the screen just to see that it actually works. So we'll get out there, and then it actually called our in-app rating 
um, complete listener. So that's, that's the way that I found the easiest to test and actually see that screen in action, maybe not actually submit an app review, but actually ensure it works. Um, um, there is this fake review manager here. Um, if you're doing UI testing or you have some other automated test in place and you just need to ensure that uh, the uh, that the code is called for the in-app review, you can actually do this. I, I believe this will allow you to not necessarily de depend upon um, uh, the the review info object being returned, so actually calling Google Play and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's a good way it, to, to fake this method, but it actually doesn't show anything in the UI. And they're, they're pretty explicit about that down here. Um, so yeah, don't use that just to show a fake prompt. You, you have to distribute it through the internal test track to, to guarantee it. You know, but you might all also see it in other places, but you're not guaranteed to see it. Um, so that's, that's my learning so far from testing it. It's pretty easy. Um, you know, having some type of toast there was super helpful to see if that listener was called. Um, I mean, I think you're, you're in a place where you could easily, you know, not implement this, uh, this rating in, in a way that actually works and it's you know, easy to get a bug, especially since it's so silent and so quiet. Um, so you really wanna be really careful with how you approach this, how you test it. Um, and yeah, like, you know, if, if it's not determined to always show, um, which is a good thing, as we discussed in the last video, um, you know, you, you have to be really cognizant of that to make sure that your users actually have a chance to see it. And when you're testing it, uh, it's, it's not just, oh, it didn't show for me because, you know, I've read the, met the quota already, right? So those are some things to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, check out the internal app sharing um, method, distribute your APK or app bundle, see if that works for you. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Get out there and plug this into your application if you haven't already.